Hi, I'm Mark and this is Foothill Paint and Fabrication. Today we're back on the 1950 Chevy pickup truck fenders. We have all four fenders plus the inner fender wells. We're going to be spraying with some primer today. So we'll cover uh, prepping, cleaning, mixing, and then spraying the polyester primer. So let's, uh, let's just jump right to it. Okay, the material that we're going to be using today is polypromy. It's a polyester primer surfacer. It's high build, low shrinkage, is what it, and it's really what you want. Uh, the old days we'd spray lacquer primer and other types of primers, but they shrank quite a bit. This material really doesn't shrink that much, so uh, since it's catalyzed, it's not outgassing solvents to make it set up. So th this material does outgas, but it uses a catalyst to harden it. All right, and set it off. So this is the hardener. It comes in a bottle. This is a two ounce bottle for one gallon. Generally under optimum con conditions, you mix um, two ounces per gallon, which comes out to obviously a half ounce per quart. So if you're only mixing a quart or a half a quart, then you have to calculate uh, accordingly. Now this bottle has graduations on it. Sometimes you get a bottle that doesn't. So when this one was full, I measured from the top all the way down to the bottom and then what I did was I just took a sharpie and I divided it into, into four equal parts. So as I squeezed it in I could tell how many ounces because you don't want to be messing around with a you know a little measuring cup or something pouring it in you just want to squeeze it out of the bottle directly into your container. So that's a little tip for you if your containers your uh, hardener does not have graduations on the side when it's brand new and you know it's a two ounce bottle then you would just divide that up into fourths and then you'd have a half ounce, half ounce, half ounce, all the way up until you get two ounces. So this material is very heavy bodied, so you want to mix it very well. Spend a lot of time mixing it, especially it's been on the shelf for a while. Uh, I don't like having them put it on the shaker, but if I'm not gonna use it for a while, I haven't put it on the shaker for a little bit, and then I'll stir it really well when I get home. So uh, let's, let's move on to the fenders and take a look at them before we get ready to mix up and do some spraying. Okay, so we have the fenders still on their stands uh, from prepping and cleaning, sanding, body work, and all that. So um, I just did a little bit of prep. I took the nuts off that were capturing right here and just put a little tape on there, a little tape, so uh, I can make sure I can spray around there and I get the primer all the way around. The other ones don't matter as much. Uh, once we get closer to paint, then I'll, I'll do something about the, like these where they're clamped on and that's gonna cover the area. So this is just the first coat of primer for these fenders. So I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, I'll do some sort of standoff or something. So the fenders have been uh, cleaned, blown off as you saw before when we cleaned and sanded them and then uh, used some soapy water and a mitt. So these are really ready uh, to go as good as they're gonna get, but we're still gonna blow them off and we're gonna use an old tack rag on them. So I'll show you how I go about that and why I do it. Okay, if you saw the other video when we were sanding these and cleaning them, you'll know that they're uh, very clean, dry, blown off, they're ready to go. But I'll still run over them with a tack rag. This is an old ratty one. I, I, I think I used this on my son's truck when I was painting. It's got orange on it. Um, but what I'll do is I'll tack them off anyways with the air hose. And the reason I use the air hose at the same time, just in case it breaks something loose, it'll kind of blow it away at the same time if uh, the stickiness of the tack rag doesn't get it. Now, tack rags require a light touch. This one's pretty worn out, so it's not super sticky anymore. But when you get a brand new one, they're kind of sticky. So you want to have a super light touch. And you're just trying to get that dust off that won't blow off or anything else. So um, I'm going to go ahead and blow these all off and tack them real good. And then we're going to move over to uh, mixing up the primer and talking about uh, getting ready to spray. Okay, so kind of stuck the stir stick in here and it's really runny on top and very thick on the bottom. So we're gonna wanna dig down deep and make sure we stir this up really well. Just like the body filler, you gotta make sure you get everything stirred up extremely well. No chunks, no lumps, no nothing. Occasionally, I'll use a little mixer that I made I think I've got it laying right here. Let me grab it. 
So I just took a piece of uh, rod and I kind of bent the shape into it and I just put it in the cordless drill and stick it down in there and mix it up, which I may do if this doesn't want to mix up well. This stuff is very heavy bodied so it will separate on you. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up and then we'll uh, bring you back. Okay, I went ahead and uh, grabbed the cordless drill and went ahead and mixed it with that just to do it quicker and a better job. So now I know there's no lumps in there and it's a nice homogenous mixture and it feels really good. I don't, I'm not lifting up any chunks and I don't feel anything on the bottom. So we're good to go. Now this primer comes in, this brand comes in multiple colors, white, kind of a yellow, they call it buff, I think, uh, red, and then black and gray. So you want to kind of color match your primer if you're not going to use a sealer uh, before you put your color on. So on this truck, I will not be using a sealer. This will be my sealer. So I'm going to uh, try, I color match this. So we're spraying a dark metallic blue or a medium dark metallic blue. So the gray is the closest to that. Now, if you can't find anything, so if you're spraying the car red, you want to use a red primer and, and so on. But if the color isn't close enough for you, you can actually pick up, so this is gray, I could pick up a quart of black and mix a little bit of black in there and stir it up and darken this up a little bit. So just so, uh, you know, it color matches a little bit better. So it's something to think about, uh, so you're not spraying as much color to get it to hide on your base coat before you spray your clear. So it's something to consider. Now I use these for this material. I don't need a graduated cup. So I picked these up at Smart Final. Um, they work, they're cheap, you can buy a whole sleeve of them for, you know, really cheap. Now the graduated ones I use when I'm mixing color and other stuff, but for polyprime and some other stuff I'll just use these cheapos and it works out really well. Now, pouring out of a brand new gallon can is a little tricky. You got to go all in, but that's why I have these paper towel rolls up here and I have a couple of paper towels standing by because I will spill, everybody spills, you still have to wipe the lip. So just be prepared before you pour um, and then just go all in. Don't do a little bit at a time, just reach and then pour and then you can slow down. You know, that's just the best way it's worked for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this off, uh, get, get ready. I'm gonna actually do this in front of you. Um, let me get set up here. I got a couple other things to grab before I make a mess. Okay, so let's pour this off. I usually just set a paper towel down so I can set the can down. It runs down. It doesn't get all over the bench because this is uncatalyzed. It'll stay sticky forever, practically, So unless it gets catalyst in it. It'll clean up with lacquer thinner, so it's not a huge deal. And then I just set the cup. Like I said, I go all in. I'll have another paper towel here ready to go. Kind of hold this, grip the can, and just go for it. And I know I need about a quart, and that's about a quart right there. So look at that, first try. So I'll just set it here. I'll grab an old paper towel or something, I'll wipe the edge, don't knock over the, get, uh, the quart. And then I'll just clean up the edge here with a paper towel. I use a lot of these cheapo paper towels. It's just a good way to do it, for me anyways. And that's it, then we wanna get the lid back on the can. I know this is all I'm gonna need, so I'm gonna scrape this uh, stir stick off, and I'll use that to mix my material. We'll grab a hammer, we'll seal that up tight, and then we'll set it, set it aside. Okay, the gun I use is just a cheapo Harbor Freight. I think I got this from Harbor Freight. Um, so it's my primer gun. It's beat up, it's not as clean as my other guns, and uh, you know, this is all I use it for, is just spraying primer. I do not use my other good guns for spraying color and clear. Uh, it, this especially catalyzed primer. Uh, if you don't get it all out of there and it sets up inside your gun in some nook and cranny, I, I guarantee you, as soon as you're spraying color or clear, that little chunk is gonna make its way loose and fly out and stick out in your paint. So. Uh, it's, it's a good investment. Even if you use one of these for primer and another one just like it for color and clear, it's worth the investment to have the two guns. So uh, it's just something you should do after all the time and money and effort you've put into to spend another 50 bucks or whatever, 60 bucks for another cheap gun. So I also use 
This little uh, paint strainer holder, I think I got this from Harbor Freight too. I think it was like, I don't know, 15 bucks or I don't know, 12 bucks. I've had it forever. But um, I've got it, a piece of angle iron screwed to my bench and then that screwed down so the gun is offset. So the air hose can be attached and it's out of the way. Uh, this swivels out of the way. I, before I had some contraption I built or did with a nail and something, I don't know how much paint I spilled until I finally got this thing. I don't know what I, what I was doing, why I was thinking that way. So uh, it works well. And uh, you know, once, once you get it in there, you can swivel that over and set the cup underneath it and let it drip the rest of the way. So it works out really well. Um, it's a good investment again, just to make your life a little easier inside your shop. So I'm gonna uh, walk around a little quick and show you how I exhaust out of my shop. I have my home built exhaust fan that I built and then uh, and I'll kind of give you a quick overview of that before we put some catalyst in this primer and start spraying. Okay, here's my exhaust fan. So this is an old solvent drum. It's, uh, you know, I don't know how many gallon, 15 gallon or something. And then down inside, I don't know if you can see, there's dual fans inside. They're running on a bearing shaft and the motor, the belt runs over to that shaft. So the motor is not in the stream of exhaust. So it's kind of an, like an explosion proof um, exhaust fan. So the fan blades and the motor are separate. So the belt goes through the side um, and then there's a, I got a little shield on there. So the, only the belt goes through. And then it just runs over to the back, goes through the ducts and ends up inside the shop. So it draws it out, works pretty good. Um, it's better than nothing, just a cir circulating fan, but which I'll also have running today when I'm spraying primer. So, but that's it, that's, uh, that's all it is. Okay, let's get the, uh, get the catalyst in. Now this is uh, approximately a quart, so let's take a half ounce. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my older um, bottles of Catalyst. I know that's not ancient, but I wanna use it up and it has a half ounce left in it. So now it's uh, 85 degrees, 86 degrees in the shop and it's only, it's quarter to nine in the morning right now. So this material is also temperature sensitive. So if it's super cold, you're spraying, uh, you know, it's uh, 50 degrees outside. Uh, it may, you may want to bump up the hardener a little bit. Don't get carried away. This stuff has to sit overnight. It needs to cure 24 hours before you can start sanding it on it anyways. But so if you go uh, half ounce per quart, and I'm just gonna dribble it in. I don't know if you can see that. I'm not dumping it in all at once. In fact, these bottles really don't allow it, this particular type of bottle. If you squeeze too hard, it'll actually shoot the end off that thing. It'll end up inside the, the uh, cup. So I stir and dribble it in. I just don't squirt it all in and then stir it up. It just makes for a better mix. It's almost there. Okay, that bottle's empty. Okay, so to mix this pro properly, it's similar to body filler. So you need to, it's kind of like mixing epoxy if you've ever done that or seen somebody do it. You want to scrape the sides, get the bottom real good. Uh, you want to expose this material to the, that catalyst everywhere, all right? So I'm going to give it a, a quick stir right here and then we're going to let it set. So we're not going to rush to pour it into the cup too quick. So we're gonna let it sit for a little while and kind of, you know, kind of spread out inside there. And then also it allows any bubbles you may have stirred in there to come to the surface. So we're gonna uh, stir that up and I'm gonna get my respirator out and uh, double check everything and get ready to spray. Okay, let's take a quick tour of what we're gonna be spraying today. I've got, uh, I got the inner fender wells on just my fender racks here, my little stands. They're just gonna get one medium heavy coat just to kind of seal them up and uh, smooth some of the scratches out and everything else. So on the fenders, what I'll do first is give all the body filler, all the bad areas, one coat first before we cover the whole fender. So I'll come in and I'll spray this whole area with a good medium wet coat to get, because obviously there's a lot more work there. So we'll hit these areas first with one really good one. And then we're gonna cover the fenders completely. 
And if we got any more material left, then we'll go over those spots again. We'll be able to see them through the, through the primer uh, as it dries from the different levels. So paint, old primer, and body filler, and filler will show. You'll be able to see. So we're going to do that as we go through. So we'll go around and spot all these parts in, and then we're going to cover the entire fenders. So uh, I'm going to have the camera back a little bit farther so I don't destroy it with overspray. And then uh, maybe have the GoPro with me too. So we'll see if we can uh, get some shots in here. Okay, normally I would have a piece of cardboard or something to test my pattern on, but this is primer. So I'll just test it on these inner fender wells here just to get my gun set up properly. HVOP, most people run too much air into them. Now this is a heavy body primer, so you're gonna have to kick your air pressure up a little bit. I'm running, I don't know, that looks like about eight or 10 pounds. I'm gonna crank it up just a little bit. Um, you just wanna atomize the paint and get it to go down nice and even and smooth. So that's all we're shooting for here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mess with the gun over here real quick get this adjusted and then uh, then we're going to go around and do a little shooting. I probably have my respirator off for just a few minutes uh, while I'm talking, while I'm spraying and then I'll, th I'll throw the thing on. Okay, the gun's adjusted pretty good. The worst thing you can do with this kind of uh, polyester primer is dry spray. So you wanna make sure it's going on wet, okay? So better to put it on a little heavier than too light. Because dry spray, it's kind of, it'll dry in the air uh, and not meld together. And then it's not really adhered properly. So always make sure you put it down nice and wet, a medium wet coat, minimum. And then you can always uh, let it flash off a little bit and put another coat if you need to. Okay, like I said, I'm just going to go around and I'm just going to uh, hit everything that has some work done to it. Uh, body filler, scratches, uh, kind of this spot right here where you say we have, you know, what, six different layers of paint. We're going to want to hit those spots first and then we'll come back and hit the other spots. Now I like, when it's wet, I like to look down to see how well I straighten stuff out. It's kind of glossy. So we're looking pretty good on these. All right, I gotta put my respirator on before I inhale any of this stuff. there we have uh, some of that red showing through we may have a little reaction going on there we'll have to check that out later okay we're gonna let that dry all those spots we hit and while I'm waiting for that to dry I'm gonna go ahead and get a medium coat on these uh, inner fender wells then we're gonna let that flash off a little bit and then uh, pour the rest into the cup and see if we got enough to finish uh, getting a good coat on all, all these parts.
Okay, so um, the, the inner fender wells are done. That's all the amount of material I want to put on there. The other fenders, I can tell they're already starting to flash off. So the gun, the gun's getting reloaded right now. The the strainer's dripping. It's finishing uh, emptying out. This stuff's pretty thick, so it'll takes a little bit to get all the way through the strainer. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just wait a couple more minutes, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, get a good medium wet coat on all the fenders. We don't want to really slather it on there because then it'll kind of orange peel and then you'll just have to sand that out. So you want to lay the primer down as smooth as possible uh, so you don't have a bunch of orange peel. And another little tip is use your prime time when you're spraying primer as a practice run for color and clear. So, you know, there's weird shapes and everything like these inner fender wells. Kind of figure out your game plan when you're spraying primer so the material flows down into those uh, hard to reach areas and stuff like that. How you're going to reach over the car. Uh, you do that in prime if you mess up and, you know, bump it with a hose or your stomach or your belly or something. Then you'll know, you know, to make other arrangements, uh, figure something else out when you're spraying the clear or color. So. Uh, the gun's going to be ready here in a second, and then uh, we're going to get these coated all the way. I'm covering uh, everything on the outside. I'm not worrying about on the inside of the fenders. Okay, let's do a quick walk around. You can still see some of the red showing through, it kind of bled through there. That's a little st sticky still. Some right there, you can see it. But they all came out pretty good. That dent we had right here, I put a couple extra coats right here on the rivets that we messed with. I put a couple of extra coats there too. You can see, I got a little bit more work to do there. Down here where the patch panels were, where I didn't glaze, I put three coats on those. Letting it flash in between each one and the den over here. So all in all, came out good. Now we're gonna let them sit overnight and then they'll be ready to sand tomorrow. Okay, that just about wraps up this video on the 1950 Chevy truck fenders, getting them primed. Uh, we got everything covered really well. I'm happy the way that came out. We used about a quart and a half of material, a little bit more than I anticipated, but uh, that's a lot of area to cover. 
So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint and Fabrication. Hit that like button if you saw if you like what you saw, and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.